Listen, uh, I got sued. What? Why? Well, not malpractice. Please don't tell me. Yeah, interference with marital relations. <sighs> and, uh, how's this? Your husband hired Mitch Tompkins. Excuse me. Right, let's get started, shall we? Dr. Delaney. Perhaps you'd like to tell us what you've done. Alison Cabrera, 17 years old. Admitted Monday for an otoplasty and tympanoplasty. Oh, I don't fancy these procedures with the longer names. Was it dangerous, Doctor? No, it was fairly routine. We were just removing some scar tissue from in and behind the left ear. Excellent. And did it go routinely? No. No? I don't think I like the sound of that. The patient was given an injection of lidocaine with 1 in 100,000 epinephrine. Her heart rate and blood pressure spiked. We brought it down and she stabilized. And... Oh, I'm so sorry. Please, continue. Ten minutes after stabilizing, the patient went into cardiac arrest. Full CPR was initiated. Resuscitation attempts failed. She died? Yes. Young woman comes in for a routine surgery. What was the cause of her scar tissue, by the way? A dog bite. She was bitten by a dog? Yes. What kind of a dog? I, I believe it was a Bichon Frise. Oh, a little dog. So she comes to us with scar tissue from a little nip on her ear from a Bichon Frise, and now she's dead. At first, we thought the patient had reacted to the lidocaine. It turns out she was given three milligrams of epinephrine, one in 1,000, instead of lidocaine with epinephrine, one in 100,000. She was injected with a lethal dose of adrenaline? Yes. Could you tell us how that could possibly occur? Well, the medications are typically poured into sterile cups, then drawn into syringes. Somehow, pure epinephrine was mistakenly poured into a cup labeled lidocaine with epinephrine. Who made that mistake? My circulating nurse. And who delivered the kill shot into the child's ear? My president. Dr. Delaney, are you familiar with the captain of the ship doctrine? Yes. Please tell us what that is. It basically means that the surgeon is responsible for any negligence that occurs in the OR. And that would be you? That would be me. And what steps, Doctor, have you taken as a result of this monumental, not to mention despicable, gaffe? Well, I'm, I'm still investigating the incident. This only happened yesterday. I uh, met with a scrub nurse, a circulating nurse, the anesthesiologist, the resident, retracing every single step. To so see. you're playing it backwards? Yes, all the way back to the trash where the vials were found and... The mix-up was clear. And what have you ascertained thus far? Once the medications are transferred to the cups, it falls to the circulating nurse and the scrub nurse to visually and audibly verify that the drug vials match the label on the cup. The scrub nurse draws the injectable into the syringe. Now, this was done, but the syringe was possibly not labeled, and... Well, this sounds like a rather protracted process. I'll tell you what. Why don't we reverse things and play it forward? So we go from the circulating nurse to the scrub nurse, to the resident, and then to who, Doctor? To me. And does it stop there? With you? Yes, sir. If only that were true. You see, when applying the captain of the ship doctrine, it becomes necessary to take a good long look at the ship. The ship, as I see it, is Chelsea General. Who then would be the captain of that ship, Dr. Delaney? I guess, uh, I guess you. Me. Alison Cabrera's death is on me. How do you think that makes me feel? You will cancel all and any procedures you have scheduled for today. Then you and I will meet with the parents of Alison Cabrera, and together we will attempt to explain why their daughter is no longer among the living. After that, all your privileges at Chelsea General will be terminated. I expect you to clear out your office by the end of the week. 
That's all, Dr. Delaney. Oh. Punched off the roof of a three-story in southeast Portland. Like a drop-by hotel. That's its name for real. An ironic place for a jumper. They should rename the place the Flea Bag Motel for its clientele. Pressure summering is 70 systolic on lactated ringers. Sinus tap 140s. O2 stat was 83 on six liters, but they were breathing, so we intubated them. No response to verbal command. Power pulse is diminished. He's bleeding everywhere. Okay, let's start massive transfusion protocol. Let's get him into the OR. Colon and spleen at least. Yeah, and probably one arterial tear. Let's go! Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Song, hey, hi. No. No? No, hey, no, hi. Want something, what want? I don't want anything, I just, um... Okay, I do. I'm being deposed by Mitch Tompkins, the attorney who heats his pool by suing us, and I guess I was looking for a little insight into what to expect. Bad man, not honorable, but smart. You know much. He eat you alive. He will eat you alive. Thanks for the advice, so. Sleep with another man's wife, ruin marriage, shame. Want advice? Get sorry pamphlet, friend Horowitz. Superior mesenteric artery is torn. How's the aorta? Fine. He's lucky. Of course, he probably wouldn't see it that way. Death wish at all. Colon's trash. Where's the bulk of the damage? Small or large bowel? Yeah. Sponge. Sponge. Hemothorax. Small, but still, he's gonna need a chest tube. Figured. Okay, let's keep him on a ventilator and paralyzed overnight at least. I'm sure he doesn't tear all the repairs. Talk to you for a second. Dr. Delaney, he's got fantastic hands, Harding. I've seen them. He also finished top of his med school class at Michigan. Well, I'll be sure to point that out to Alison Cabrera's parents. Your daughter's dead, but take heart. The doctor who killed her graduated top of his class. Not in my character, necessarily to be compassionate, but what happened to Stuart, we all trust our teams. The nurses, the anesthesiologists, this could have happened to any one of us. Indeed, but it happened to Stuart Delaney. You talk of this buck as if it were some kind of fluke, a one-off. Over 100,000 people die every year from gaffes exactly like this, preventable medical mistakes. 100,000. It's considered the sixth biggest killer in the United States. One study says there are 40 wrong site, wrong side, wrong patient procedures every week. To simply fire the guy just like that? Yes, just like that. And if it had been you, Buck, who made the same mistake, you'd be gone as well. You know why? It's in my character. Why would he hire Mitch Tompkins? He's med mal, not divorce. Well, he probably hired the divorce lawyer to go after you. For me, he just wanted somebody good at skinning a surgeon's hide. But I, I don't... How... This is a no-fault state. Which prevents him from suing you for pain and suffering, but evidently not me. You have a lawyer? Scott Henderson said he'd handle a depo. He's got experience handling Mitch Tompkins, so... I'm sorry. What can you salvage? Some of the small bowel might be enough so he can eat through his mouth instead of a tube. Oh, that'd be nice. If he decides to OD on his next attempt, he'll have an absorptive service to digest all the pills. Hey, how we doing? Not dead yet, Bucky boy. Come back later. Sponge. Sponge. Hey. Hi. Sorry. Well, I screwed up. Stuart, what happened? Michelle, if you want to feel bad for somebody, don't let it be me, okay? 
If you want, you should cry for the girl's parents or... It wasn't your fault, Stuart. Are you responsible? Technically, okay, you were the surgeon of record, but it was not your fault. No family? It's still looking. Oh, and now it's the party. News is bad, Buck. Still alive. <laughs> That's right. Let's make it all about you, Buck. I'm actually with you on this. His prognosis sucks. Even if he survives without peritonitis and sepsis, we send him out eating through a tube, pooping into a bag, addicted to pain meds, and no will to live. What's the point? What's the point? That's really your question, Sid. You want to know what's wrong with health care in this country? Take a look. There is your poster boy. Come again? He is part of the 10%. Uh, of what? The sickest 10% of Medicare beneficiaries that account for 64% of the spending. This jumper wants to be dead, and we are going to spend maybe a million dollars of money we don't have trying to keep him alive. Buck, if I decide to hit you, you become one of the 10%. He's bleeding. Arterial repair isn't holding. Let's get him back into the OR. Really? The buck. 32-year-old female, head-on collision. Blood pressure, 70 systolic. Bradycardia, obvious skull deformity. Pupils? Sluggish, and she's not following any commands. Let's get a CT stat. Page Dr. Clark, right away. Is she gonna die? It's very serious. She's got a lot of bleeding in her brain. Dr. Park is prepping her for surgery as we speak. I'll be assisting. We are going to do everything that we can. Okay. His portal vein's clotted. Great. This could take a while. Small bowel shot. The whole thing is ischemic. Liver's gone too. Take a look. Yeah, I know I did. Uh, right on cue, Mr. Transplant. You're in the game. Really? Bowel, pancreas, liver. We're not giving them. We need them. For him? You want me to... For him? First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to expedite this process. Litigation is ugly ugly business. The idea that we protract it so with so many onerous procedural exercises, best to make Godspeed, because as vile as the process can be in a general sense, it figures to be especially repugnant when it involves infidelity, treachery, deceit. Can we all agree on that? We're not even on the record yet. Can I talk to you, Mark? I'm terribly sorry, but my client is represented by counsel. I'd like to speak to my husband, please. Mark. What are you doing? What are you looking to prove? You know what, Tina? I'm an optimistic guy. I plan to meet somebody else someday. Get married. Maybe have a son. I, I dream of all kinds of things. I even imagine my son growing up and getting married. And the idea that what happened to me might one day happen. I guess what I'm trying to prove is that adultery is a bigger deal than we'd all like to pretend. And if there's a little less of it in the future because of my efforts here, I'll sleep at night. How's your sleep these days, Tina? I don't understand how this could have possibly happened. It shouldn't have. There's no excuse. Don't you label drugs, for God's sake? Yes, we do, but they get transferred into containers and syringes. There are checks and safeguards in place, but they weren't followed through properly here. Mr. and Mrs. Cabrera, your daughter died due to our incompetence. I will bear the weight of her death for the rest of my life, as will Dr. Delaney. 
there's no way to spin this. Alison was admitted for a relatively minor procedure and we killed her. I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be one of the best hospitals in the world and you killed our daughter. Yes, we did. Pupils fixed and dilated. They were sluggish in the ER. Brainstem honeyate. Fine, V-fib. Right, we need to defibrillate. All clear? clear. Alive, brain dead. She died. She's brain dead. Yes, she's still breathing on a ventilator, but there was simply too much damage to her brain. I'm so sorry. You try fix. It's too much breathing. Oh my God. Do you want to sit down for no, a second? No, no, no. Or... Can I say goodbye? Can I... can I see her? Of course. We'll get her ready, and then... What about her organs? Well, uh, uh... Did she have an organ donor card, or...? No, no. She's a very religious person. She's a devout Catholic. We talked about giving life whenever and... and, and however we could, so... I think she'd be happy to know that... You know, she helped save someone. At the time you and my client's spouse, Dr. Ridgway, became conjugal... Excuse me, I should not assume facts not in evidence. Did you become conjugal with Dr. Ridgway? Yes. Thank you. That happened when, sir? Um, it started a little over a year ago. And at the time, you knew she was married? Yes. Did that matter to you? Did that matter to you, Dr. Wilson, that Tina Ridgway was married? Yes. How did it matter? What is the point of this? I'm sorry. This is trivial to you? I realize you're an important man. I don't mean to bother you with something so trivial as another man's marriage. At the time you became conjugal with Dr. Ridgway, what consideration did you give to the emotional harm this illicit affair might cause my client? Any? Look. I'm sorry. The question was, what consideration, if any, did you give to the emotional harm your adulterous affair would cause my client? I, I guess not enough. <laughs> I see. How often have you and Dr. Ridgway had sexual relations? More than 10? Are you kidding me? More than 10? Yes. More than 20? More than 50? I'm so sorry the patient died. So sorry patient died. I'm so sorry the patient died. I am so sorry the patient died. Hi, Dr. Park. Yes. Uh, this is a little awkward. But... I'm so sorry the patient... <clears throat> My wife is a devout...
Catholic, as I said. I overheard the man that is to get her bowel and liver. He tried to commit suicide. He jumped from a balcony. Suicide is considered a sin in our religion. I cannot have Renee's organs going to a jumper. What? We're on hold. We may find another donor, but maybe a Methodist. Are you kidding me? Look, Gato, maybe it's for the best. The chances of this guy pulling through. Is he waking up at all? He's been trying, moving his extremities. We've had him off meds for the last two hours. He's been doing that for about an hour. I'm Dr. Villanueva, one of the surgeons here. Can you hear me, sir? Good. Your lungs are fine. You've had some abdominal damage. We're going to try and take out the tube later today. Okay? It won't affect your voice. You'll be able to talk once the tube is gone. could march right into court, file a motion for sanctions and costs, and probably prevail. I've persuaded him not to on the promise that we'll resume tomorrow. I still can't believe this is a real cause of action. Suing me for... It's real. Plus, since she's a surgeon, he's got expectations of economic benefit. The case is very real. I cannot advise you on how to answer the question that occasions you to leave the room. If you never thought about the husband, the affair just happened, one of those things... He'll make you ought to be callous, unthinking, inconsiderate. That comes with a price tag. If, on the other hand, you did consider Mark's emotional pain and had the affair anyway, your offense is deemed reflective with reckless disregard for a person's likely suffering. It comes with a much bigger price tag. So the police are in there now? Yeah, we gave them five minutes. I am very confused. Hello. Fran Horowitz from Risk Management, hello. We know who you are, Fran. Yes, well, good news. I've just come from the husband of the donor, and since the donee is no longer a sinner, Mr. Ford is willing to redirect the organs to Mr. Harry. Uh, yeah, apparently he's a good kid, college grad, works some kind of geek job. Well, who pushed him? His father. Believe that? His father? What the hell happened? The kid came out from Tucson to track down his dad. Evidently, his dad bailed out on him and his mother years ago. Hotel's a flop house. Dad's a tweaker, and he crashes there. I guess he didn't want to be found. So he pushes his son off a roof? All I know is someone saw him fall and assumed he was a jumper. And the father? That punk's in police custody. God. You know... I must say, I, I do not handle many of these cases. I, I find them to be rather sordid as a rule. Of course, I'm a bit of a prude, so that could be me. <laughs> do you find extramarital affairs to be at all sordid, Doctor? I try not to draw general rules about anything. I look at my life and my work on a case-by-case -case basis. That was a splendid answer. It's almost as if you had the night to think about it. Objection. Tell me, how did it happen? You and Dr. Ridgway, how'd you meet? How did we meet? Yes, how did love come to bloom? Well, we work together. Ah, you met his fellow neurosurgeons. Yes. Makes sense, you had a professional relationship as colleagues and it um, progressed. Would that be a good word, it progressed? Okay. And would it be a natural or unnatural progression? Excuse me? Well, forgive me, but doctors work together all the time without their relationships turning sexual. You would agree that this was an aberrant turn of events. No, I most certainly would not agree. We work 20-hour days. You and Tina. Doctors. 
surgeons. We spend our lives together. Personal relationships happen. Oh, please. Doctors commonly get together socially, sexually? Y yes. Name three. What? Name three other relationships or affairs that have happened between co-workers at Chelsea General. <laughs> I'm not going to name names. Because you can't. You can't even name three. I could name 20. Oh, 20 now. At least. <laughs> and the hospital is OK with this? Any rules in play that govern the sexual program? We're done. Excuse me? We're done. Please speak to my client. I'm afraid I am not done. And if you unilaterally walk out of these proceedings again, I will go for sanctions. I do not care. We are done. I should have seen it coming. He's going after the hospital. The hospital? Of course. He plans to show that relationships are both common and foreseeable. Plus, the relationship began while you were both acting under the apparent scope of authority as surgeons. That's ridiculous. Yeah, perhaps, but arguably colorable, which means I'm out. It's a conflict. I can't represent you since I represent the hospital. You'll have to get separate counsel. Seriously? Seriously. One last piece of advice before I officially withdraw as your lawyer. Settle this quickly. You'll get crushed. Wait, wait. Settle because I had a social relationship with a colleague? A married colleague, yes. Settle, you're gonna get crushed. I'd like to give him another day, get him a little stronger, replace more blood. We can keep the donor patient on the ventilator, maybe give it a go tomorrow. His mother's en route from Tucson. It might be best to wait till she gets here anyway. He has lost a lot of blood already. We've got to get his crit up. We'll need to give him transfusions overnight. If You'll get it. Let's just step back. Sid, we've seen the havoc wreaked inside this kid. It's a miracle that he's made it this far. Buck, you had a glimpse too. Do you actually think we can pull this off? His father pushed him off a roof. I'm not tossing him under a bus. I will save this kid. here so I mean by nothing I mean in terms of employment I was very much enjoying getting to know you maybe after the horror of this subsides Hooten will somehow no he won't you know why he's right what can I do Keep in touch. I promise. Well, can you give me a moment? Sure. Can you save him? So far, we've been able to. Your son suffered a lot of internal injuries. His bowel was destroyed, his liver's failing. He needs a transplant now. Oh, my God. He'll be in excellent hands, Miss Harriman. He's clearly a warrior. Not many would have survived the fall he took. Please save my boy, Doctor. We'll try everything we can, believe me. We are taking the liver off ice. Mark the time to reperfusion. Goal is under 30. How are we doing? We're on the clock. Hey. Lousy day, huh? Listen. I know you've got stuff you're dealing with. Plus, uh, I'm just a monkey. It's not my place to do battle with the elephants, but 
Stuart Delaney. I mean, do you think if a bunch of us went to Hooten, we could convince him that oh, he... Michelle, you know what Harding Hooten's nickname has been at Chelsea General for years? Hardly human, but frankly, I haven't seen that. Well, because he's mellowed some. Except when it comes to the standard of care. On that, he is as intractably inhuman as ever. You'll never move that elephant. How are his hemodynamics? Looking great at this end. All right. One last look. No tension or torsion of the vasculature. Hemostasis good, and I believe this young man gets to remain among the living. Let's close. This is not to say you're not an asshole on occasion, but because you are. And that you're one hell of a good surgeon. I'll second that. Man can't handle a compliment. Could be his first. Suture. Well, well, well. Looking good. I don't feel so great. Well, you're not supposed to. You just got shoved off the roof of a building. But you're one tough kid. I can tell you that. Thanks for saving me. Well, is that what he's telling you? He saved you? Oh, this is Dr. Napoor. I know. I was in and out. I remember you all. How long before I get to go home? Uh, don't push it, my brother, OK? Just kick back, heal. Okay, let's get started. If we finish this quickly, we can all carry on. Dr. Wilson and Dr. Ridgway, you two like to carry on, am I right? Please stand. Again, it's not my endeavor to traipse the bedroom through hospital procedures, but what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, does it? Chelsea General is being sued. And it seems Mitch Tompkins has laid out a cause of action alleging our complicity in your adulterous affair. A cautionary tale for all, I suppose. You may sit. Oh, I feel like a bit of a cow this week, kicking everyone when they're down. I suppose I should offer some milk. Dr. Villanueva, Dr. Tierney, Dr. Napoor, please ascend, take the stage. I present to you all our heroes of the day. Together, they saved a young man who, for all intents and purposes, should be rather dead. I so love looking at heroes. I especially enjoy seeing them on display in my hospital. Was it a grand feeling saving Keith Harriman? It must have been grand. What did we do wrong? Wrong? <laughs> Dr. Napoor. Your patient was more pulled apart than the scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, and you pulled him back together. Such excellent doctoring. Or should I say fortitude? How did you manage to keep such a positive attitude in the light of this young man's underwhelming odds? Tell me, was your attitude positive right from the get-go? You seem confused, as am I, looking at my notes. Let me see. You know, my intel around here is pretty good. Dr. Napoor, you remarked on how lovely it would be if Mr. Harriman could eat through his mouth instead of a tube. It would make it easier for him to take his pills on his next suicide attempt. And Buck, you pointed to the patient as the poster boy for everything that's wrong with American healthcare. A suicidal deadbeat who drains the system. Dr. Napoor, I'm told that you concurred with Dr. Tierney's analysis, which the patient heard, by the way. I didn't exactly say that. No. No, you didn't exactly say that. What you said was, even if he survives, we'll just be sending him out to poop into a bag, addicted to pain meds, with no will to live. What's the point? That's what you said. Exactly. And Dr. Villanueva, you said nothing. In the face of these indecencies, you said nothing to reprimand them. I believe I threatened to hit Buck. Twice. Oh, please. The truth of the matter is, you three heroes didn't really kick into hero gear until you realized that the patient was an attempted homicide victim. When he was just a jumper, your concern, if we can even call it that, was far less considerable. 
You were all inclined to do just a little bit less for a homeless drug addict than you were for a college graduate. Buck, you even resisted bothering to waste good organs on the man. I find that outrageous. The three of you might consider something. Suicidal people are regarded as ill. And if you bother to read the mission statement of this hospital, you'll discover that we rather fancy treating the sick, not shunning them. Excellent doctoring indeed. Judging the quality of a man's life before deciding on the quality of his care. Well, perhaps there are death panels in this country after all. You're out of line. You were out of line, Dr. Napoor. Your litmus test on best efforts was as out of line here as it was inaccurate. Uh, I'm sorry. But whatever they might have said, I you didn't say- You said nothing, Dr. Villanueva. Or at least not enough. And I very well suspect that your attitude was aligned with theirs, and they picked up on your cue. Where the hell did you get that? I get that because I know it, Gatto. Everyone here follows your lead. They pick up their cue from the big cat. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in your lack of leadership here. I'm disappointed in all three of you. Heroes that you are. You okay? I'm not nearly as guilty as you made me out. But I'm more guilty than I'd like to admit. I'm sorry. Now back to my question. Are you okay? I know you take mistakes at this place personal sometimes. Go easy on yourself, would you? You worried about me, Gatto? If not me, then who? duty here. This is on me. This was my... I disagree. You took a risk, Tina. You had something to lose here, which you lost. Me, I just went for a joy ride. As far as I'm concerned, my behavior was worse than yours here. I don't know how you get that. There are consequences to things. I know I don't need to be telling you that. But the things we do have meaning. I think this thing between us, I want it to have meaning. What are you saying? Maybe it's to ease my guilt. I, I don't know, but I want what we are. I want it to have meaning. The place my head is at right now. I know, I know. You're a good man. 
and a good doctor. But my best methodology for preventing these accidents from happening again is zero tolerance, and I must make doctor, sure I don't disagree with your position. It's not just the right call. It's the only one. I wish you well.